Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will discuss non-taxable exchanges, specifically like-kind exchanges, Section 1031. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, which is you, my viewer, is to connect with me on a professional level, such as LinkedIn account, or if you have a Facebook, you could like my Facebook page. You are also welcome to connect with me on a personal level on my Facebook page. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So if you like this lecture, there are thousands of other lectures like this one housed on YouTube. I do have a website where I organize my lectures via chapter as well as course. Now, this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. There's a good chance if you are viewing this recording, you are either studying for your CPA exam or you are an accounting student. In, in either situation, Jaeger CPA Review offers you hundreds of hours of video lectures about taxing, auditing, uh, tax, audit, uh, accounting, as well as other topics, thousands of multiple choice questions will detail solution and simulations with solutions, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus others. Jaeger CPA Review is, is the best valued CPA course and also it follows the blueprint of the AI CPA. Use promo code PMF, you will get 10% off of the best valued CPA course. You will then benefit yourself and benefit this channel. Now, before we start this uh, session today, I want to make the following assumptions. I want to assume that you know how to determine the gain or loss on a disposition. So when we sell an asset, you know how to determine the gain or the loss. And you know the difference between realized and recognized gain or loss. If not, just go to this playlist, which is chapter 13, and view the, le the lecture about how to determine gain or loss and the difference between realized versus recognized. So let's go ahead and dive into the topic, which is non-taxable transaction. So what's the idea of a non-taxable non transaction? Here's the idea. You have an asset, okay? And uh, you want to replace it. So you want to sell this asset. You, you, what you want to do is you want to sell, you want to sell this asset, then buy a new one. For example, in a business, you want to sell an old truck, buy a new truck, sold an old machinery, buy a new machinery. Now, if you outright sell the asset, what's going to happen? You're going to have the asset disposition formula. The, the IRS is going to say, tell me how much the amount you, let me just put it down here. You have to compute the amount you realize minus the adjusted basis. And the difference between those could be a gain, which is taxable, or could be a loss. But this is how you determine the gain or a loss. So is there any way around this? If you're going to sell an asset, then turn around and buy a new asset. Is there a way to avoid paying taxes? Well, yes, there is. Guess what? You can, you can do an exchange. Because let's think about it for a moment. You sold the asset, then you bought a new one. Basically, your position did not change that much. The change is in form and not in substance. So you sold an asset and you bought a new asset. So you replaced one asset with another asset. So what, what we're saying is, why should you pay taxes if you replaced one asset with a new asset? Okay? You don't have the ability to pay. There is not really, you did not receive any cash. Well, if you receive cash, that's a different story in the exchange. But technically, the, the your position is, is economically the same. Therefore, what we're saying is, when we do an exchange, Maybe the gain or the loss, the gain specifically, or carry, worry about is the gain should not. We should not tax it now. We should defer it. That's that's what we're trying to avoid. Trying to avoid selling, ex, doing an exchange, and avoiding that gain legally. Simply put, legally, because if you sold it, that's it. You have a gain. If you do an exchange rather than sell it, this is what we're going to be talking about now. It's going to turn the transaction into a non-taxable transaction. Now, what is non-taxable? We need to define what non-taxable is. In a, in a non-taxable transaction, realized gain or loss is not currently recognized. Simply put, it is postponed. Recognition is postponed to a future date rather than eliminated. So non-taxable transaction is not equal to something we call tax-free transaction. Because tax-free transaction is totally different. Tax-free transaction is when the non-recognition of the gain is permanent. Simply put, 
you don't recognize the gain, not today, not in the future. Non-taxable transaction, you would recognize the gain in the future. You basically postpone it, postpone it for a future date. It's not eliminated, it's postponed, okay? Now, holding period for the new asset in a non-taxable transaction is the carryover to the new asset acquired. So whatever the holding period was, it carries over to the new asset. Okay, let's take a look at an example. Just basically make sure you know the difference between non-taxable transaction and tax-free, which is we don't care about tax-free anyway. Just want to make sure you understand that non-taxable, it means the gain is postponed. Postpone means deferred. Another word for it is deferred. It's like you're pushing the can down the road. You will you will you will tax that gain later. When is it later when you sell this asset? Okay. So Deborah <clears throat> completes an untaxable exchange of property with an adjusted basis of ten thousand and a fair value of twelve thousand. For uh, for a property with a fair value of twelve thousand. So simply put, if she if, if Deborah sold this asset, if Deborah sold this asset, the asset will have a fair value of twelve. Deborah's basis is 10. Deborah would have had the gain of 2,000, where Deborah will have to pay taxes on that gain. Okay? Deborah has a realized gain of 2,000, which is 12,000 minus 10,000. Her recognized gain is zero. Why? Because her, her basis in the replacement asset is the carryover basis of 10,000. Now, we're going to talk about the basis shortly, much, much more in details, how, do, how we compute the basis. But simply put, she avoided paying taxes by going through a non-taxable exchange. So she exchanged one property with another property. Assume the replacement property is non-depreciable and Deborah subsequently sells it for 12,000. So remember her basis in this property is 10,000, her basis carried. Now eventually let's assume this is a land and let's assume she sold this land for 12,000 in the future. 12,000 minus 10,000, her basis. So notice the 2,000 that was the third when we did the exchange is realized here when we sold the asset. So notice we did not pay for it now. Maybe we, we sold this asset two, three years down the road. Well, guess what? Then when it's two, three years down the road, we will tax it, okay? If the replacement property is depreciable, the carryover basis of 10,000 is used in, 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 in calculating depreciation. So if this asset was a machinery rather than land, well, what we do is we have to depreciate the asset. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Now we're going to be a little bit more specific and talk about like-kind exchanges, which are covered under Section 1031. So you need to know Section 1031 is like-kind exchanges. Okay, so what do we mean by like-kind exchanges? It means if we exchange one asset into a similar asset. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, and we're not going to go into exactly what does like-kind means, but on the CPA exam and your courses, just they will say it's a like-kind exchange accepted. Now, it could be an office building versus a rental property. It could be a land versus a warehouse. It's st it could still be like-kind exchange, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the same, okay? So section 1031, which is the... Income tax code requires non-taxable treatment for gains and losses when all three uh, conditions are met. Form of transaction is an exchange, so you're actually doing an exchange. Asset involved, now this is important because students always tripped on this, and it's a very simple mistake to make. Asset involved are used in a trade or business or help for production of income. So at section 1031 applies to business or income producing property to be more specific not personal use property not personal use okay and the asset exchange must be like kind and again we're not going to go into the like kind uh, definition we don't want to get any technical just accept it's a like kind okay like kind property defined as only include real property used for business or investment purposes i'm basically saying the same thing it does not include let me tell you what does not include property held for personal use Okay, it doesn't include inventory. It doesn't include business and investment, personal property, personal property. It's real property. Oh, what is real property? Well, building, land, warehouse, okay, real property. Domestic property exchange for foreign, for foreign property and partnership interest. It doesn't include those. Also, it does not include it does not include financial instruments like stocks, bonds, or notes, even though they are held for investments. Those are not included. 
Okay, so you need to know what's included and what's not. Because on the CPA exam, they could have a question for you and they could throw a personal help personal uh, for personal use property. Or they can use business and investment personal property and you would do the computation and you did not have to do so. Okay. During the current year and the exchange, 40 acres of unimproved land in Illinois, fair market value of of uh, 200,000 basis of 70,000. So there we go, before you proceed, okay? So Andy has a gain minus 70. There's a gain of 130,000. And for 10 acres, unimproved land in California, the fair market value of 200,000. Now every time you have an exchange, make sure, make sure you understand that the value of what you are giving is the same value of what you are receiving. Notice your fair market value is 200,000. What you're going to be receiving, the fair market value has to be 200,000, right? So the fair market value of the other party is 200,000. Although Andy has a realized gain of 130, this is the realized, the realized gain. <clears throat> On this transaction, none of the gain is recognized since the transaction qualifies as a like-kind exchange. Andy's basis and the new property is 70000 The carryover basis reflect the realized gain that is deferred. So simply put, it's 200000 minus 130. So how do we compute the basis, which we're going to get to it in a moment. We're going to learn how to compute the basis. But basis, it's going to be, um, we have to understand that we have 130000 of deferred gain. So we'll take the fair market value minus the deferred gain to, to compute the basis. Don't worry, we're going to get to the fair market value of new asset minus the deferred gain. This is how we get to the basis, okay, if we have a deferred gain. But don't worry, we'll get to that later. If Andy were to sell the California property, he would have a realized and recognized gain of 130. Of course, if he's... If he sold it for 200,000, if Randy turn around and sell the California property for 200,000, his basis is 70. Now the 100, $130,000 is taxable. Okay, so he avoided the taxes here when he did the exchange, but once he's gonna, if he sold the California property for 200,000, that will be taxable. And now he has the ability to pay taxes because he actually sold, sold the property. Ex additional exchange requirement, the transaction must involve direct exchange of the property to qualify as a like-kind exchange. It doesn't have to be simultaneous. It doesn't have to be right there. You sold and you buy at the same time, okay? A new property must be identified within 45 days of the old property was transferred. So you have 45 days to identify a property you need to transfer. And the new property must a new property must be received by the earlier of the following within 180 days of the old property was transferred or the due date include an extension for the tax return covering year of transfer. Simply put, you have approximately 180 days to figure out what you want to exchange and actually exchange it. So it doesn't the exchange doesn't have to be simultaneous. Okay. Phil owns a store in downtown Plano. Adjacent to his store is a commercial parking lot owned by Sally. Fair market value of the property is 175. And that's very normal. Business people, they want to expand, so they want to buy additional land. Phil would like to acquire the parking lot, which would allow him to expand his store. That makes sense. But Sally does not want to sell it due to the large gain she would recognize. So Sally's basis, she bought this property or her basis, it doesn't matter whether she bought it or we don't care. But if, she's, if, if Sally sold the property, that's her basis. If she sold it, she's going to have a gain of 172000 And Sally doesn't want to sell it because she's going to recognize the gain. So Sally and Phil, they're going to work something out together so they can avoid for Sally to paying the taxes. So you already know what gonna, they're going to do. They're going to do an exchange. Phil agrees to purchase any like-kind property worth $175,000 that's acceptable to Sally if Sally agrees to immediately transfer the parking lot to Phil. So Phil told her, okay, I understand your position. You don't want to sell it because of taxes. Why don't you choose another property for one seventy-five? I will buy the property. Then I will give you that property in the exchange. Sally agrees to the plan and the commercial lot is transferred to Phil on October 1st. Okay. Later that month, Sally identified, notice the, it did not happen immediately. Later that month, Sally identified a townhouse worth 175 and direct Phil to buy it for her. So that's, that's the deal. So Phil bought the house. 
Phil negotiated the sale, which closes on December the 12th, and transferred the property to Sally. This delayed exchange would qualify as a like-kind exchange since the replacement property was identified within 45 days of the parking lot being transferred to Phil, and the townhouse was transferred to Sally within 180 days. So the property, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the townhouse was identified within 45 days and it went transferred to Sally within 180 days. So it's it's all good. We Everything qualifies. In effect, Sally sold the parking lot to Phil for 175. Then she reinvested the proceeds in another piece of property without having to pay taxes on the realized gain. So this is technically what happened. Now her basis in the house is 3,000, which is the fair market value of the property received minus the deferred gain, she deferred gain of 172. So her basis in the house, we're well, gonna talk about the basis later, is $3,000. Now she's gonna have an issue when she sells the, that house later, okay? And we'll talk about selling the house later. <laughs> and this is a picture of uh, what we just said. You have 45 days to identify the property that you want to exchange if you did not do it immediately. And you have 180 days in total to deliver that property to the um, to the seller now um, boot received what is the idea of boot now remember every time we have an exchange remember what I told you the fair market value are equal okay so when you exchange something if you exchange a computer and you think it's worth three hundred dollars guess what you want to receive exactly three hundred dollars the other party if they're paying three hundred dollars for your computer they think it's worth three hundred dollars so that's always the case when there's an exchange we always have to assume it's between two rational individuals and the fair market value and the exchange are equal to each other now when we're doing and when we're exchanging assets land for building building for you know another building a rental property guess what they may not be exactly the same therefore one party might have to pay or might have to give a boot to make the exchange equal so that's why we're going to have boot in the exchange and usually boot it might involve cash it might really it might involve the relief of that so the idea of the boot is to equalize the transaction Okay, so we're going to look at boot received and boot giving. Any property involved in the exchange that's not the like kind property is a boot. So remember, you have the like kind property, a rental property to a rental property, but we could have cash involved. Here's what you need to know. The receipt of boot causes a gain recognition. So if you are receiving the boot, and especially if it's cash, okay, obviously if you receive cash, then you might have, you might have to recognize uh, you might have some gain to be recognized. So what is the gain equal to? The gain equal to the lesser of. So when you compute the gain, the gain recognize, gain recognize, copy this formula down, is lesser of boot received or gain Realize now, you know, you understand how we compute the gain realized. The gain realized is the amount realized AR minus adjusted basis. This is the gain realized. Okay, so hopefully, you know what the gain realized is. Now, no loss is recognized when boot is received. Now, if you receive the boot, you cannot recognize a loss. So, know the rules if you receive a boot, there is no loss. If you um, no loss is recognized when boot is received, the receipt of boot would cause a gain to be recognized. It would cause a gain to be recognized because, as far as the government are concerned, is if you if you have a gain, that's when they that's when they they are concerned with you. They want to be, they want uh, they want the share. They want the taxes. They want you to pay taxes. Okay, let's take a look at examples that illustrate this concept. And again, this is. This is important concept. Emily and Fran exchange land. The exchange qualify as a like, like kind under section 1031. Because Emily's land adjusted basis, uh, because Emily's land is worth 24,000 adjusted basis of 20 and Fran land, Fran land, Fran's land has a fair market value of 19. So Emily's has a value of 24 and Fran has a value for the land of 19. So guess what? Fran will have to pay will have to pay an additional 5000 and hopefully this makes sense. I'm, if I'm going to give you a land that's worth 24000 I want to receive 24000 in return. You're giving me a land that's only worth 19 so you're going to have to add 5000 So now since Emily receiving a boot, Emily receiving a boot, since Emily receiving a boot, she's going to have to compute her gain. You have to compute your gain anyway. So 
the land is worth 20 the cost basis uh, the adjusted basis is I'm sorry the fair market value is 24 the adjusted basis is 20 so if she sold this land she would have a gain of 4,000 so this is the gain realized now we're gonna have to compare this gain to the boot the boot she received the boot of 5,000 and the amount that you realize is the lower of a one or two the lower is 4,000 therefore there is a gain Emily would recognize a gain of 4,000 the lower of the gain or the boot the fair market value of the boot okay let's change the scenario a little bit assume the same fact in the prior example except that Fran's land is worth 21 okay if it's worth 21 Fran will only have to give up 3,000 in cash to make the transaction equal then we have to do the same thing again Fran will have a realized gain of 4,000 which we computed earlier and a boot she received the boot of 3,000 now which one is the lower of these two? Her taxable gain on this transaction is 3000 Let's change the scenario again. Assume the same fact, except that the adjusted basis of Emily's land is 30000 So her adjusted basis is 30000 And the fair market value is 24 Therefore, she has a loss. Emily realized a loss of 6000 The receipt of a boot of 5000 does not trigger the loss recognition. So we're back to here. So back to 19 back to 19,000 so um, Emily gave her 19,000 plus 5,000 cash guess what but since um, Emily has a loss that's it no loss is recognized even when boot is received so although she said I have a loss in the transaction well you cannot recognize you cannot recognize the loss you cannot recognize the loss okay so what happened when boot is giving so when you are giving the boot now we talked about basically here Emily Emily was receiving the boot what happened when boot is giving okay the transferer of boot property may recognize a gain or a loss on that property the gain or the loss is recognized to the extent of the difference between the adjusted basis and the fair market value of the boot so how do you know what's the gain and what's the loss you take your adjusted basis uh, and the fair market value of the boot given and you compute your gain or a loss now if the boot is cash <laughs> The, the, doesn't trigger recognition now think about it why it does not trigger uh why it does not trigger gain it does not trigger a gain or a loss recognition well if you have some money in your pocket pull it out if you have 20 20 dollars how much is the 20 dollars worth 20 dollars what's the book value of the 20 dollars what's your what's your basis 20 dollars so if you have 20 dollars $20 is exactly $20. It's not going to be a gain or a loss. So you did not buy it for 18 and now you have $20. $20 is worth $20. Therefore, cash does not trigger recognition. Let's take a look at this example. Sarah and Gary exchanged land in a like kind exchange. Sarah received a land with a fair market value of 75 and transfer land uh, worth 63 adjusted basis of 45. So there we go. First, let's let's look at the gain the land is worth 63 minus 45 there is a gain of 18,000 okay and a cash of 12,000 so she, Sarah she has to give up a total of seven, 75 because she received something of received the value of 75 okay so this is the gain so she gave up the land that's worth 63 but that's not good enough to make the exchange equal plus she gave up cash of 12,000 equal to 75,000 and she received a land from Gary for 75,000 so Sarah realized gain is 18,000 okay however none of the gain is none of the gain is recognized because it's going to be the third and since the she, since she gave cash cash does not trigger recognition okay so there is no, there is no recognized gain now assume the same fact in the previous example, ex except that Sarah transferred land worth 30,000. Okay, now she transferred land worth 30,000 and a boot worth 45,000. Whatever that boot is, she gave something other than cash worth 45,000 with an adjusted basis of 27. Now, notice the boot is worth 45, adjusted basis of 27. Let's start to do some computation here. So, notice on the boot. 45 minus 27 on the boot there's a gain 
of 18,000 on the boot. Sarah's net gain on the exchange is 12,000. That's the net gain on the exchange. 75 of the amount realized minus 63,000. Okay, but she's transferring two pieces of property, land. This is the total, but we, we don't care about the total because we have to break it down to see which one is recognized, which one is not recognized. She's transferring two, piece of, two pieces of property, land, which is a like kind. It has a building loss of 6,000. The land itself has a building loss of 6,000 and non like kind property with a building gain of built in gain of 18,000. Remember, the boot that she transferred, the, that other property that she gave up in the exchange, has a gain of 18,000. Now, what's going to happen in this case? You cannot net the loss, because remember, we have here a loss. You cannot net the loss with the gain. You cannot say she has a loss of 6,000, a gain of 18. Let's net them out. Not at all. In this case, the $6,000 loss on the like kind exchange is the third. The third means not recognized. And the $18,000 gain is recognized because the gain is on the boot. And if you give a boot, you do recognize the gain or the loss on that boot. In other words, the realized loss on the like kind exchange cannot be used to offset the realized gain on the boot giving as part of the transaction. Those are two different, two different assets. One is a like kind exchange, the other one is not. The boot, you will have a recognized gain and a loss. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, which is an important topic, is the basis and holding property, uh, the basis and holding period of property received. Now, it's very important to determine what's my basis. I did an exchange. How do I compute my basis in a like kind exchange? Okay, so this is important. And what's, what's my holding period? Because the holding period determines if it's a short term or long term, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. It's going to affect how much taxes you pay when you sell it. The basis of the property received in a like kind exchange must be adjusted to reflect any postponed or the, the which is the third gain or loss. Okay. The basis of the like kind property received in the exchange is the property's fair market value. So we're going to, we're, what we're going to do, we're going to, to find out the basis, we're going to take fair market value minus post pound gain or fair market value plus postpone loss this is going to be your basis because you, you're not going to have both gain and loss postpone gain and postpone loss either postpone gain or a postpone loss okay so what does that mean so here's the formula we're going to take fair market value minus minus gain not recognized plus loss not recognized not recognized it means postponed it means the third it's the gain that you are not going to recognize now okay and that's going to give you the basis of the property the basis in the new asset now let's think about it for a moment you might be saying why am i subtracting a gain like that doesn't make any sense okay let me just give you the logic behind it hopefully it, it will make sense let's assume you receive the fair market value of a property that's worth a hundred thousand that's the fair market value then within this transaction you had a deferred gain of ten thousand so at ten thousand you computed the ten thousand deferred gain which is we talked about how we compute this the gain that's not recognized it's the third of ten thousand so what you do the fair market value of the property is a hundred thousand then you subtract your gain your postponed gain your postponed gain now your basis is ninety thousand your basis is lower you're saying why is the gain lowering my basis this should hopefully make sense to you why because if you have lower basis it means in the future you will have higher gain okay and what's going to happen when you sell this asset later the lower basis will recapture your gain. So basically your gain is the third. Okay, this $10,000 lowered your basis for now. It's, it's not taxable now, but it's baked into your basis in a sense that it lowered your basis. What's going to happen, you can't run away from the gain. When you sell the asset later, your gain will be higher, or if you sell it at a loss, your loss will be lower. So either your gain in the future, your gain is higher, or your loss is lower because your basis is lower. Therefore, if you if you sold it for less than 90,000, your loss is lower. Now, let's assume it's the fair market value equal to 100,000. Now, let's work with the, with the loss. And what you do, and you have a 10,000 deferred loss. Then what you do is you'll take the 100,000 plus you add the 10,000 of the deferred loss. Now, your basis is 110. What you did is you increased your basis. That doesn't make any sense. Why is a loss increasing my basis? 
Okay, the reason is when you have higher basis, it means when you sell it, you're going to have lower gain. Or if you sell it at a loss, you're going to have a higher loss. So in both situation, when you sell this asset later, that loss that you deferred is recaptured either in higher gain or lower losses. Okay, so this is the formula for the basis. Now I'm going to show you another formula, but I want, make, I want to make sure you understand this formula because this is the formula that I like to use. Okay, so what's the basis in the boot received? Now this is the boot received. This is totally different than the like-kind exchange. It's the fair market value of the property. So whatever you, whatever the fair market value of the property, that's the received boot. That's the, that's the basis of the boot. Let's take a look at an example. Jamie exchange a building used in the business with an adjusted basis of four hundred and thirty thousand with a fair value of four thirty eight. Hold on a second before we proceed. Four thirty eight is the fair market value. Adjusted basis is four thirty. We have an eight thousand dollar gain here. Okay, for a land with a fair market value of 480. Good. Okay, so this is like basically a perfect exchange. The exchange qualifies a like kind of exchange. The basis in the land. So how much is the basis in the land? Well, the basis in the land is the fair market value. And this is and we assume this that we assume this gain is deferred because we said it's a like kind of exchange. It's the fair market value, which is 438 minus the deferred gain, which is 8000. So the basis is 430,000. The fair market value minus the deferred basis, minus the deferred gain. The deferred gain is $8,000. Assume the same fact in the prior example, except that the building has an adjusted basis of 480 and a fair market value of 380. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Fair market value of 380, adjusted basis of 480. Now we have a loss of $100,000. Okay, the fair market value of the land received equal to 380, which is the equal to each other. Now, what's going to happen is this. This is a like kind exchange. What's going to happen to this loss? This loss will be deferred. So the basis of the land is the fair market value of the land that we, the fair market value of the land received. Okay, plus the post, no, fair market value is 380. The fair market value of the land received plus the deferred losses, which is equal to 480. So this is the basis. So what's going to happen? We increased um, our basis is 480. We added the postponed loss at the fair market value, which in turn in the future, it's going to either um, uh, lower our gain or increase our losses, increase our losses. Now, this is one way to compute the basis. Okay. Another way to compute the basis is the basis and like kind property using the code approach. And the code approach, um, hopefully it makes sense, but uh, again, I just like the other method, but we're gonna cover the code, the code approach. Here's how you compute your basis. You take adjusted basis of like kind, like kind asset given. So basically what you're using now is your adjusted basis. And the other method, notice, this method uses the fair market value. You start with the fair market value. Under the code approach, you will start with the adjusted basis of the asset given, okay? So the other method, you started with the fair market value received, okay? This method, you will start with the adjusted basis of the asset given, what you're given up. Then you add to it, adjusted basis of boot given, how much boot you given, okay? Let's assume you gave an adjusted basis of 10,000, and you gave cash of 2,000. That's gonna be added to your basis. The boot given is 2,000, that makes sense. Plus any gain recognized. So if you recognized any gain on that exchange, you will add it. Let's assume you, you have a gain of 4,000. You, you add the recognized gain. This is confusing. Why am I adding a gain here? And I just, and you just told me to deduct a gain here. This is confusing. No, look at the difference between the two gain. This is a gain not recognized, okay? This is a gain not recognized. This is a gain that's recognized. Notice the difference. You add a gain that's recognized. Let me tell you why you would do so. You would add the gain because if the gain is recognized, it means it's already taxed. If it's already taxed, you're going to let it increase your basis so you cannot tax it again. Okay, so that's why you add the gain recognized. Then you subtract any fair market value of boot received. If you pay 2,000 and they paid you 1,000, I'm just using cash to make it 
simple for you to understand, then you subtract a thousand or whatever boot they gave you. So if you gave them two thousand, say no, 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 here's a thousand back, then you're gonna reduce your basis. You're gonna reduce your basis by a thousand. Then you will reduce your basis by any losses recognized. So if you recognize any losses, that's gonna lower your basis. And hopefully this makes sense. Lowering your basis, it means in the future, you're gonna either have higher, higher, higher taxes or lower losses because you're basically uh, you recognize the loss, you recognize the loss now, you did not defer it. And that's equal to your basis. And that's equal to your basis. Again, this approach is logical in terms of the recovery of capital doctrine. Unrecovered cost or other basis is increased by additional cost or decreased by cost received. So when you pay boot, it's going to increase your basis. When you receive boot, it's going to reduce your basis. And this, hopefully, this make intuitive sense to you. Okay. Any gain recognized is included in, in the basis of the property. Sure, if you pay taxes on the gain, well, that gain is going to increase your property. The taxpayer has been taxed on this amount and is now entitled to recover to recover it tax-free. Hopefully, this makes sense. Any loss is deducted from the basis of the new property because the taxpayer has received a tax benefit on that amount. The loss gave you a benefit. Well, if it gave you a benefit, lower your, lower your basis. <laughs> Let's take a look at an example here to see how this all fits together. We have Zach and Vera exchange equipment of the same general business class. Zach has a basis of 25,000, fair market value of 40. Immediately what we can say here about Zach on this property, Zach has a gain on this property of 15,000. Hopefully you can see this. Vera basis of the property is 20, fair market value of, uh, fair market value of 30. There's a gain of 10,000 for Vera. Now notice, they cannot exchange those. What else? Vera will have, to, Vera or Vera will have to give something else because Zach is, is exchanging something with 40,000 and she's exchanging only, or he, I'm not sure if this is a he or a she name, um, with 30,000. Therefore, she's gonna have to give up something worth 10,000. So Vera gave also gave securities worth of 10,000 with a fair with a basis of seven. So this make it make the exchange equal. Now what's going to happen? You could be asked so many questions about this problem. You could be asked what is the realized gain? What is the recognized gain? What's the basis for each? Okay? So we're going to go ahead and try to answer all these questions to illustrate all the concept that we that we learned thus far. Okay? So let's take a look at it. Zach Zach received um, a, a fair market value of the property, 30,000 plus securities received in total 40,000, a less basis of property given, 25,000. So realized gain is 15,000, boot received is 10,000. So what would Zach realize? What's, I'm sorry, yeah, what would Zach realize? The realized gain is 15,000, why? Let me just show you why. Like, should I just, computed his gain here. So that's his realized gain. That's his realized gain. Then boot received is 10,000. Well, since you received boot, the, ta the gain recognized is the lower of 15,000 or 10,000. So here's the gain for Zach. Zach would recognize 10,000 worth of gain, although he realized 15,000. Vera, she has uh, she has a realized gain of ten thousand. I already computed up here. What is her What's her recognized amount? Her recognized amount is zero. She did not receive boot. Therefore, there is no gain. Okay. Now, what is the what is Zach's basis? What is Zach's basis? Well, we said we take the fair market value of the property received minus uh, postponed gain. Now, remember, before we proceed here, let me just make sure. If the, if the gain realized is 15, this is the amount that's realized, and we recognize 10, 10 was recognized, it means 5 is postponed, 5 is postponed. Well, the, well we're going to take the fair market value of the asset received, fair market value of asset received, and the like kind exchange is 30,000, then he's going to deduct, then he's going to deduct the postponed gain of 5,000, which was going to give him a basis of 25. Now Vera, she's gonna, she, her basis is the fair market value of asset received. She received $40,000 of fair market value 
What did she defer? She did she defer anything? Yes, she deferred four thousand of I'm not four thousand, ten thousand. Remember, her her realized none of it was recognized, therefore the whole thing was deferred. So she deferred ten thousand of gain. We subtract the deferred gain, therefore her basis is thirty thousand. And this is the computation. This is the basis for Zach. This is the basis for Vera. The reason why those qu the, this topic is complicated, as I told you, they can ask you six different things about actually more than six different things. They can ask you also about the boot, uh, the basis for the boot for Zach, because Zach receives the boot. What's the basis for the boot for Zach? It's 10,000. They can ask you seven different questions about se seven different questions on the CPA exam about this question. What is the amount realized for Zach? What's the amount realized for Vera? What's the amount recognized for Zach? What's the amount recognized for Vera? What's the basis for Zach? What's the basis for Vera? And what's the basis for the boot that Zach received, which is $10,000, the fair market value? In the spirit of this, let's work. Let's look at additional examples, basically, um, just to make sure we understand this. So this is five different scenarios, five different exchanges. Let's focus here. If you could do this, then you can, you, you'll have a handle on the basics, okay? Good handle on the basics. So we have exchanges, five different exchanges. We're gonna take it one at a time and focus on that. Exchange one, you have an adjusted basis of uh, rental property given up 400,000. The fair market value of it is 900,000. So here immediately, you know, you have a gain of 500,000. So here's the exchange. We have a gain of 500,000. So, well, that's not, this is it. Yeah, this is the realized gain. You immediately say the difference between those two is my realized gain. Now, fair market value of property received, they gave you 900,000, which is good. Okay, so what is your basis? Your basis, if we're using the code approach, the code approach, the code approach, you will take your realized gain, okay, uh, plus the old adjusted basis equal to your, I'm sorry, um, now I meant to say uh, the basis, well, let, let's do the fair market value. You would use the fair market value, which is 900,000 minus um, the deferred gain equal to 400,000. So why why the why did the third gain is 500,000? My gain is 500,000, but since the exchange was a like kind exchange and I did not receive any boot, the whole thing is the third, therefore my basis equal to 400,000. Under the code approach, I will start with my adjusted basis, which is 400,000. Plus I add to it any gain recognized. I'm, I'm sorry any gain realized no sorry plus any gain realized which is how much is the gain realized zero i did not realize any gain therefore my basis is four hundred thousand. okay so notice under the the fair fair market value and the code method it's the same thing okay let's look at the second property we are given a property, adjusted basis of 400,000, fair market value equal to 600,000. We have a realized gain of 200,000. Okay, hopefully you see this. Fair market value of property received is 900,000. Well, they gave us something worth 900. Um, we gave up, uh, fair market value of property given up is 600,000. Now we, ha we, we have to have a boot involved because it doesn't make any sense. If we gave up something for 600,000, and they gave us something, they were not going to give us something for 900,000 unless we give a boot. Boot given is obviously has to be 300,000. Okay, so if boot is giving, do we have any recognized gain? If boot is giving, oops, so just give me one second. Boot given. Boot given, adjusted basis is 300,000. So the boot given, we, we gave it a boot worth 300,000, okay, and has an adjusted basis of 300,000. Most likely this boot is what? Most likely this boot is cash. Because if we gave something 300,000 and it's worth 300,000, there is no gain and there is no loss, okay? So what is our adjusted basis for this property? It's the fair market value of asset received, which is? 900,000 minus any 
uh, if we have a gain, how much of the gain we recognize? Nothing. Why? Because we did not have any gain. Minus the gain deferred equal to 700,000. Now, if we're using the code approach, the code approach, the, the book value of the asset given up, or adjust, I say book value, but it's adjusted basis. The book value is for financial reporting. The adjusted basis, which is right here, 400,000. 400,000, and we gave up. We paid cash. We said the $300,000 is cash. We gave up cash equal to 700,000. So the code approach, we start with the adjusted basis. And if we gave up anything, we're going to add up that thing. If we received something, we're going to reduce it. We're going to reduce it. Let's take a look at property three. It has a, uh, a basis of 400,000, fair market value of 300. We have a realized loss of 300,000. And we received a property that's worth 600,000. What does that mean? It means we have to have given $600,000 in boot. Okay? So now what happened is we have a loss and we have to pay the boot. But it's a like kind exchange. The loss is 100,000. And guess what? If it's $100,000, it's a postponed because it's a like kind exchange. So what's our basis? Our basis is the fair market value of, of the received asset, which is 900,000, plus the postponed loss of 100,000 equal to a million. This is the fair market value approach. The book value, if you want to use the book value approach, you had a basis of an asset with a basis of 400,000, then you gave up $600,000 in cash, then your basis is a million. Notice whatever you used, your basis will always be the same, the code or the fair market value. Let's take a look at number four. Um, we're, uh, adjusted basis is 400,000, fair market value of the asset is 1.2 million. We have realized gain of 800,000. Now, what we did is we gave something worth 1.2 million and they gave us something that's worth 900,000. Hold on a second. They need to give us something else. They need to give us a boot of 300,000. We need to give us a boot. Otherwise, the exchange is not equal. Okay. Now, since we received a boot, now we have to determine which, which, which amount of the gain is taxable and which amount of the gain is deferred. So the gain, let me, let me compute the gain again, 1.2 million minus 400,000. We have a realized gain of 800,000. This is the realized gain, RG. The boot equal to 300,000. So of the 800,000, we're going to recognize the lower we're going to recognize the lower of the two. So 300 is lower. Therefore, we're going to recognize 300. So we're going to defer, we're going to be deferring 500,000. So what's my basis? My basis is the fair market value of asset received, 900,000. And I have uh, a deferred gain. I subtract my deferred gain, which will give me 400,000. 400,000 as basis. Let's do this using the code method. Under the code method, we're going to look at starting with our basis. Our basis for this property is 400,000. Then what happened here? What happened here is we have a gain and a recognized gain of, we have a recognized gain of 300,000. This is the recognized gain. We already computed the recognized gain plus 300,000. That's going to bring us up to 700,000. Then we receive the boot. Then the boot would reduce our basis and the boot is 300,000. Therefore, our basis equal to 400,000 using the code approach. Again, whether you use the fair market value or the code, you should get a basis of 400,000. Let's take a look at uh, exchange five. Exchange five. Exchange five, you have an asset Adjusted basis of 400,000, fair market value of 380. You have a loss, realized loss of 20,000. Then they gave you an asset that's worth 350, 350. Well, guess what? To make this exchange equal, you have to give me something else. You have to give me 30,000. So here what I did, I have a loss and I received boot. I have a loss and I received boot. Okay. First, let me tell you, if you have a loss and you receive boot, do you have any gain? Do you have any recognized gain or loss? And the answer is no. Therefore, you're going to take the fair market value of asset received, which is fair market value of asset received equal to 350. And what you're going to do, you're going to add 
the postponed loss because I'm not going to recognize it. I'm going to add it. Therefore, my basis is 370. My basis is 370. The code approach, the code approach, I'm going to start with the basis that I gave. I'm going to start with the basis that I gave. The basis that I gave gave up as 400,000, but I received the boot. The boot would reduce my basis. That's equal to 370, and that's the code approach. Any way you look at it, whether it's uh, whether it's a fair market value approach or the basis approach, it's it's gonna it's gonna be the same. I hope this exercise. I do hope this exercise help you understand um, how to compute the basis. Well, we computed few things here. We computed the realized gain, realized loss, and we computed the basis. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, uh, please email me. Um, if you have uh, if you have to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. This topic is heavily tested on the CPA exam. Make sure you understand it. In the next session, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work a session where we have liability involved because everything that we worked here, we did not assume any liability being assumed or any liability given up by the by the buyer by the by the two parties so the liability involved will involve a little bit more complication nothing really it's basically it's part of a boot but i would like to cover it separately study hard 